So what has broken and gone wrong over the last two years and 70,000 Canadian miles with my uh, 2019 Range Rover Sport? In this video, I'm gonna break that down and show you exactly what the cost of ownership and repairs have been over the last 70,000 kilometers. Hey everybody, my name is Omeka. This is Driven Hard. If you're brand new to the channel, nice to meet you. I do videos with my 2019 Range Rover Sport and the occasional other vehicles I can get my hands on every now and then. But in today's video, I'm doing something I've never done before. I'm gonna show you exactly what it's cost, maintenance and repairs wise, for my 2019 Range Rover Sport. So let's dive into it. Oh, <laughs> whoa! What do we got there? So how fitting is it that I'm doing uh, what's gone wrong with my 2019 Range Rover Sport <laughs> when I am actually driving a lunar car because where do you think the Range Rover is? Yeah, blow me up in the comments. It is actually at the dealership because the day I was originally gonna film this video, um, my starter failed on me. Now, it wasn't an actual reliability issue, it was a oopsies. Um, but we're gonna talk about that on a future video. Believe it or not, this will be the fourth starter I've gone through. Um, but let's hop into the Jaguar and I'm gonna break down the cost and everything and um, let's talk about it. All right, so I purchased my Range Rover Sport back in May of 2019. When I picked it up from the dealership, it was a special order, meaning I ordered in January of that year. It was actually for my 35th birthday dream car. Always wanted a Range Rover. Um, it was just, it was, it's a dream car. It was one for my dad, it was one for me. So um, this was everything I'd wanted. I picked it up, there was 27 kilometers on it. At the time, my dad was the first one. Oh, you know what, if you wanna see the, the video of it, you can check that out, I'll link it up in the cards. Um, getting into a Range Rover for the very first time, being my very first brand new vehicle as well, um, I definitely knew I was getting into a Land Rover product, so I knew there could be some hiccups. I've seen the videos and everything, so um, I was prepared mentally to take whatever's going to come my way. So I want to walk you through some of the things that have gone wrong. Um, let it be um, it was a failure on the vehicle's part or it was something I broke and damaged that I had to get repaired and um, walk you through the costs and everything the best the best that my memory recalls. Um, 67,000 kilometers on it, two years, coming up two years of ownership. Now, <laughs> this is not a pavement princess. I drive this thing hard, probably harder than a lot of folks out there. Um, so it goes through deep water, it goes through mud. <laughs> we didn't have winter, so it hasn't really seen a lot of snow, but um, it goes through absolutely everything I can throw at it. Um, tons of, you know, like sand, desert, like it's, I went to Moab when I first got it with only 5,000 kilometers on it. I got the first battle wound um, on it at Moab. So like it, it, it gets used, but um, let's go through it and talk about the different things. Um, so the very, very first issue I had with it, you can't even call it an issue. It was um, just a recall on the, um, rear climate system. They just had to reprogram something um, for it. And uh, cause it wasn't, what was the issue with it? I can't remember specifically. There was something with it. It wasn't, the rear climate wasn't getting AC and there's two different modules for the climate control. And so they couldn't even fix it when, it, when I was down in Mexico with it um, because the ones that they sell in Mexico only have one climate system that does all, all four zones, I guess, front and, and back, where the Canadian ones have a separate, completely separate module or computer, whatever it is, for the rear system. At least that's how they explained it to me. Um, but anyways, quick trip to the US San Juan dealership there in Texas, and they reprogrammed it, did a free oil change as well. Um, and this was when I had, you know, oh, it's probably approaching about 10,000 kilometers or so on it in the beginning. Um, the, um, so I'll go through my list right here. 
Um, so the window switch, the window switch, this was actually a recent thing. Um, the window switch, what was happening with it? One of the switches for the passenger's rear window, um, the switch was just a little loose. So the dealership just replaced that entire thing under warranty, no cost to me. Um, vacuum leak in the brakes. So this was something I didn't recognize. It was when I went on a test drive and I was bringing it in for one of the other things we'll get here in a second. Um, the tech there, Notice that there's a slight vacuum leak. So when I depressed the brake pedal, it made a, a hissing sound. And um, so that was a small vacuum leak. And so they replaced a couple different things within the braking system. Um, under warranty, no issue whatsoever. Um, I did have two tires slashed well. Um, I was traveling um, and having two tires slashed on a four wheel drive, you know you can't actually, you're not supposed to, it was the front and the rear on the passenger side that they slashed. And they didn't slash it fully, it was just there was knife marks on them. And so I had to get it replaced on, under my insurance. They actually bought me four brand new tires, replaced all four, because as per the manual and as per the dealership, um, wrote a letter to my insurance company recommending that I don't replace only two tires because it was on front and rear axle. If it was just the two front axle tires or the two uh, rear axle tires that were slashed, they could just replace the two. But because it was front and rear, um, they told my insurance company, no, um, you should replace all four to ensure there's no driveline component issues or anything like that. I pushed for that anyways, because the tires were dead. Um, so four, but that's wear and tear, I guess you could call it. Um, front side panel was cracked. So one of the front side panel on the passenger side, one of the plastic panels, it was cracked. It might've been cracked, I don't know how long, but the dealership, they just replaced that free of charge. <laughs> No, this one. This happened back when I was in Canada. The steering wheel, the steering wheel came loose. They've never seen this before when I took it to the dealership. Um, so what is what happened was there was a retaining bolt inside here, and for, somehow the retaining bolt just came loose. And so I could just jiggle. It's. I wonder if I have any videos of it. I could just jiggle the steering wheel um, up and down a little bit, and it just had some stupid amount of play in it. Um, they came in, they fixed that for me in like 30 minutes. It was just, they just had to tighten it. And um, yeah, so they fixed that. It was like a, that was a really, really quick, quick fix. Um, parking glitch. Okay, so this one has, I think it's gone, but it's, it's just, it's a, it's a weird anom anom anomaly. So sometimes when I put it into park, it registers it's in park but the computer doesn't register it's in park. And so it'll just say, it won't actually go in park. And so if I shut it off, it'll beep, 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 beep. You're not, the transmission is not on park. But if I turn it back on, it, it'll, transmission, it, it's in park. Or, um, and this happens like probably one every, I, I can't remember the last time it's happened. But it's, a, it's, it's one of those weird glitches that they haven't actually been able to find. And one time they did find it, they also found uh, something else I might have modified. Um, and so they're like, we're blaming that, that you're having a glitch because you might have modified something in the computer. Um, so it's just one of those things that, like I said, I can't remember the last time it happened, um, but uh, I'm like, whatever, I'll just live with it. But uh, yeah, four zone climate, I talked about the recall. Okay, the suspension the bushings, the front ones. And this is, this is, this is one of the things that, um, it's interesting because I've replaced the suspension bushings, I think twice. And I can't remember, they replaced them in Mexico and then they replaced them here again. But I believe in Mexico, they only did two. And then in, in, when I came to Canada, I believe they did two more or they did four. Um, and if you watch some of my earlier videos when I'm in Mexico, so anything that looks more desert or anything like that, and you hear, eh, 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 eh. in fact, one, I'll link it, where I do, I crawl along a riverbed. You actually can hear it if you're listening for the, eh, 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 eh. and that's the suspension bushings. And oh man, if I get, hopefully I get the terminology right. It's not on the control arms. It's on the linkage of something 
what these bushings do is they, when you're, when you're articulating different wheels and you get one wheel up, one wheel down, and they're the system that's forcing the wheel to hit the ground as one wheel's up in the air, basically those are just wearing out prematurely. Now, why are they wearing out prematurely? Um, because I get in scenarios like that sometimes two or three times a week. Um, I go off-roading a lot. And one of the things I was talking to the service manager at my local dealership here, he's like, yeah, they're built to go off-roading, but everything has a, some sort of limit. And, you know, like they know about my channel and everything. They're like, you just push it beyond the limits, you, you know? So it's just, you're going to wear stuff out faster than a regular person would wear it out. Even somebody who regularly goes off-roading. Um, it's just like when you take your track, your, your car to a track, you take a 911 to a track, you're going to wear out your brakes and your, your, um, your tires and other suspension and driveline components faster than uh, the average 911 owner. Same thing with, you know, Jeeps, people who modify Wranglers, there's other components that wear out just because you're you're using it the way it was built, but you're using it to the extreme. So things just wear out a little faster. That's one of the things that I'm having with some of the um, the rubber part of the suspension components, or sorry, rather the rubber bushings. Now um, they are com they are replacing. I believe it's a linkage arm or something. It's it's part of the same system that you know, when you're articulating your wheels, um, they're replacing that, that, that whole, that whole piece, um, just because it's loose on the passenger side and, uh, they're replacing that fully under warranty. God bless JLR, um, for taking care of that. Um, but once again, they're like, yeah, you know, that it shouldn't have, it shouldn't, it shouldn't be loose like that, even though you are using it for what you're using it, but they're able to, to warranty that. And, uh, I'm grateful for that. The, oh, seatbelt buckle. So what happens is, I don't know if you can see, you know where you plug in your seatbelt? Okay, don't, don't drop like saucers down there. I was, I, I was having some chicken nuggets and um, uh, I dropped some sauce into my buckle and I tried to clean it out the best I could, but I couldn't. And so, and then I, I couldn't really buckle my seatbelt properly anymore. It took a few times for it to lock. So they, uh, they just replaced the whole buckle. Um, okay, cool. And then um, the brake pedal. That's one of the things they're looking at right now is when I press the brake, there's a little, 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 little weird feel. And one of the things that they found when they looked at that the first time is they just found it caked in dust. Like there was fine dust particles in one part of the braking system. And they were able to fix that and replace that under warranty. But they're like, that's because if your car is in a cloud of dust, which if you watch some of my videos when I'm in Mexico, there's parts I'm off-roading. I'm just surrounded in, in a thing of dust. And so they're like, what happens is when you're, when you press the brake, that dust is actually getting sucked into certain components. And that's just the parts where it can't be sealed because it needs some sort of give. So stuff's going to get in there. And they're like, when you're in a situation like that, dust and particles and stuff is going to get in there and start wearing stuff out. And that's exactly what happened in that case. But like I said, they were able to replace that under warranty. Now, the one thing that has, keep, has kept happening is the starter motor. Now, the starter motor, I've been doing some research on this. For pretty much, it's a standard location for most vehicles. It's one of the lower parts of the vehicle um, because they can't have it mounted high due to heat. Um, due to the heat of the engine transmission and everything. Um, so they mount it lower. Unfortunately, what happens is if you go past, if you go past 900 millimeters of the max weighting depth in your brand new Range Rover or something, um, the starter component, the starter motor, it can get wet. It cannot be, it should not be <laughs> fully submerged um, for an extended period of time. And, um, you know, I cannot say if I have or if I haven't done that, but, um, well, you know what? I'll try to throw up a picture of what the starter motor looked like the first time. <laughs> um, and so I, uh, I, this will be actually, I think the fourth starter motor, the first one completely failed on me. They cleaned it out. It failed later. Uh, so they replaced it under warranty. And then that one, um, that ended up just, the second one ended up just being a bad part. Sometimes when parts get shipped, they get damaged and they put it in and it started making a funny sound on startup, like maybe a few weeks later. And so they just ordered another one right away and they swapped that one out before I had any actual issues with it. 
And so that's, so the third one and the third one lasted over a year. Um, and, um, but did a little bit of off-roading with my buddy who had a four inch lifted Jeep Wrangler, waded through some water. And obviously it might've been waiting probably 12 to 13 mil, hundred millimeters, not 900. So past the waiting depth and um, water gunk and shit just gets caught up into the starter motor and it starts the connections. It, it's just not a good situation to get in. So respect the maximum waiting depth of your Range Rover. Lesson learned, hopefully. <laughs> um, and so I'm just dealing with um, that right now. I'll have a full video with that um, at some other point. Um, yeah, once I get the truck back and I know exactly what's happened, um, I might actually be paying out of pocket for this one. It's not the end of the world. It's only like, it's like a thousand bucks for the part. And then like, I think labor. Oh, and then this one other part, it's like another hundred, it'll be like about 1500 Canadian dollars or so. So it's not like the end of the world. It's not like super expensive. Um, wife's not happy about that, but you know what, when you off roading, when you drive hard, when you do things. Um, to the level, to the, I'm not the most extreme, capable, knowledgeable or anything. I'm just saying I push my rig a lot harder than a lot of owners do. And um, that's something that's exactly, I'm using it exactly the way I always dreamt of using it. And so, yeah, I'm going to break shit. Stuff's going to happen. Um, you know, so it's just, that's how it is. Um, you know, give me a, give me a forerunner, give me a line cruiser, give me a Wrangler. I'm going to send that bitch to the shop as well. It's just, it's just how I drive. I break things. My wife is always, you're breaking everything. Well, I know because things need to be a mecha proof, right? That's the joke that we have in the house and not too many things are definitely nothing that Land Rover is going to make. It's going to be a mecha proof except for the Defender. That's one of the things I'm going to ask uh, the techs is like the suspenders, the, the Defender's front end suspension components, um, the parts that have been wearing down faster on mine, like, what are they like on the Defender? How much thicker are they? How are they built differently? Because that's one thing that I'm kind of curious to see, um, you know, but uh, anyways. So all in all, to this date, all of those repairs that I've mentioned have cost me, let me get my calculator here, do, 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 nothing because it's all covered by warranty. That's why you buy a new vehicle, right? Um, it's all been warranted. So, like it's been whatever it's been great um you know i think land rover and um the company has a phenomenal warranty department um you know they go you know they really have done their their best to kind of help consumers um there's always going to be horror stories but then i always kind of bring it back it's like well bro what's your relationship like with your local dealership and service department right? Are you pissed off every time you go there? Are you upset? Are you right? Or like, do you not like them? Then go to one that you like. I've been blessed that I've been dealing with dealerships that have been phenomenal. Um, you, you know, I bring them Christmas cookies and like, I just have a good relationship with them. That's just, you, you know, so, um, it's been great. Um, of course there's the ownership costs of, you know, tires. We, we bought winter tires. Um, you know, oil changes are like 400 bucks. Um, mud damage. I put down mud damage. What did I, oh, right. When I got stuck in the mud and then I got towed out and the whole side was like, there were thorns and it was, so I had to get that re, um, repolished. Right. But that, that wasn't overly expensive. Um, so I got repolished, uh, the rims I've got refinished all four of them. I've got refinished once I'll be getting them refinished again this spring. Um, because yeah, yeah, I've already wrecked them. Um, and then yeah, like that's, you know, there's bumps and scra scrapes like the front lip. I've painted that three times. Um, the front lip part because you know, I hit rocks, I hit this and like stuff happens. You're off-roading, you're using it, you're loving it. Stuff's going to happen. You just got to learn to accept that. But would I change anything? Mm, yeah, I'd get 22s. I'd get 22s because then I could get some altering tires for it or I could go to 20s and get proper altering tires. Um, I would never get 21s again because there's no tire sizes for 21s because they're more of a boutique tire size or rim size. But I love it. I would not change anything. If you're 
kind of thinking about going and getting a Range Rover or a Land Rover product, stop thinking and just go do it. Understand what you're getting into. If you're going to use it, um, just be aware that, hey, you know, things happen off-road that are out of our control. Um, some that are in our control and we just ignore that control. Um, but things are going to happen and, like, it's not a Toyota. Things are not cheap. Um, you, you know, but um, will I have this vehicle out of warranty? Probably not. We're looking at getting an extended warranty. I got to talk to the, make some calls and talk because we have about 15,000 kilometers left on the extended warranty. So that'll run up this year. Um, and then that means we'll still have a year and a half with it. I don't know if I want to have a year and a half with it out of warranty. We'll see. Um, you know, but we'll, we'll see. But anyways, guys, so hopefully you got something from this video. I just wanted to run through and, and talk about the things that have gone wrong and, and whatnot. And you can, you can look at the things that you can deem my fault, which I'll accept, or the things that you could look at, you know, why did the steering wheel come loose? Honestly, I don't know. It could have just like, who knows why, right? Um, you know, if I look at build quality, reliability and, and stuff like that, the, oh, here's, here are the, the points I would look at. I'd look at the suspension front end, right? Because I'd like to know why do I, why do I keep having a slight issue with that? Even though I do use it, um, or am I just pushing it past the limits that it was really designed for? And am I out driving the vehicle's capability? Should I really be in something like the new Defender because it's built tougher? The Range Rover is capable and can go off-road, but the Defender was built to go off-road. It's just stronger. So is that more of the proper car, truck, whatever, for me and my uses? Like, those are the, those are the things you have to look at. Um, you know, but other than this, like, I wouldn't, like, I, I haven't had electrical glitches. Um, you know, that have been like, you know, the parking thing, but you know, they're like, Oh, it's tuned. So like, they can't really say, um, and it doesn't really bug me because it barely happens. But you know, some people have nightmare issues with the system. I just don't. Um, yeah, there might be a glitch every now and then, but I just turn it off, turn it back on, glitch fixed. It's a computer. <laughs> it's not just one. It's like 50 computers all at, you know, working together. So I don't know. Would I change anything? Absolutely not, except for what I've mentioned. Um, would I buy another one? Hell yeah. Once the new SVR comes out 2023, 2024, um, we definitely going to be comping that because, man, I just, I want something that's just has more road presence, uh, sounds better, and uh, I'd love to drive the S SVR, and yeah, I'll be taking that off-road. I'll be doing the exact same type of stuff, just with an SVR, with the new one. Definitely not the first year build because they never buy the first year build of any manufacturer. That's just, I, I just can't deal with those type of problems. But uh, yeah, anyways, drop me a comment, guys. Like the video if you really want to see more stuff and stay connected. Subscribe. Would love to um, connect with you, Instagram and all that. Going to do a review for this Jaguar. It has reminded me why sedans are so fun. Um, I will not buy a Jaguar sedan, um, but I've been talking to the wife. It's like, man, I really want to go get our M5 because that would just be, oh my God, I've had so much fun in this little car that uh, the M5, I'm really starting to think that needs to be coming up next. So till next time, everybody, let me know what you are driving hard.